All right. All right, I think everybody's entering now. Uh, we're going to start. I'm not going to take up a whole lot of your guys' time tonight. So um, all I ask is that let me get through the slideshow. And then at the end, you guys can ask questions because I'm sure a lot of you have questions now, but they might get answered during the presentation. So just let me get through it. And then if you still have a question, um, you can ask it. Um, some of you have been coaching before. Some of you, this is your first year. So if it's new information, that's great. And if it's not, this is just a little refresher for you. So just hang in there with me, okay? Um, so Lounge Soccer, our mission is to create soccer players, but also um, players who go onto the field and make a positive impact with the person that they are, the way they act. So strong character, um, achieving players on and off the field and in our community. Um, and a lot of that starts with our mentality. Um, so at this level, our priority is that these kids have a good time, that they come, they have fun, they love being out there, they love being with their team. Um, so that is what we put an emphasis on. Um, a lot of the players, maybe I would dare say all the players are not gonna be the next Olympian soccer player. They're not gonna be the next Messi. That's not what they're here for. Um, they're here just to have fun and to make friends. So. As coaches, that's what we're going to, that's the environment we're going to create. So fun, it's why we play, it's why we're here. Um, integrity, fairness, teamwork, those are the things that we want to um, put out to our players. Um, the things that we're going to talk about today are pretty simple, kind of key contacts, who to contact for what, what our policies are, rules. A lot of us here are not very experienced soccer players. Maybe you guys didn't even anticipate coaching this season at all. Um, so we're gonna go over kind of the rules of the game, what to expect, what to enforce, um, and then just what your role is as the coach. Um, so just make sure your mic's muted. I don't think anybody's unmuted um, right now. And then again, we'll just answer questions at the end. Let's see. Uh, so Lounge Soccer, we're a full service soccer organization, which means at any level, you can um, find a program for you, whether that's micros with three-year-olds or you're an adult, you want to do adult league or we have top soccer for kids with disabilities. So if you want to play soccer, there's probably something you um, can do, something you can find. And we're professional operated, but volunteer driven. So we have people who are paid to do a lot of the operating work. We put things in motion, but the program doesn't work without you guys who are our volunteers. So um, just thank you for saying yes. Um, again. So you may not have anticipated coaching the season, but there are a lot of kids who wouldn't have been able to play if you didn't. So um, just thank you on that end for that. Um, so on top of this program, there are a lot of other opportunities for your kids to get involved. So this is the fall season, but we also have supplemental programs. If you have done winter rec clinics before, we have that. We also have summer camps that just ended last week. Um, and then we have Rec TA, which is on Friday nights. So throughout this season, throughout the fall, if you want to have an extra practice with someone who's not a parent volunteer, who's someone who's paid to be there, maybe knows a little bit more, that's an opportunity that you have too. Um, this is just kind of going into our supplemental so programs a little more in depth. Um, if Saturdays end up not working out for you, we also next season, you can sign up for a weekday minis, which is on Mondays. Um, and then Rec, Rec TA is what we just talked about on Friday nights. Um, so this is kind of just who to contact for what. Um, a lot of your questions I can answer, but there's a lot that um, someone else may be better equipped to answer. For example, if you have a question about the practice schedule, um, I can definitely find that answer for you. But if you want, um, somebody who's gonna know exactly what their answer is and can respond right away. Um, Jamie Rawson is who you wanna contact for that because she um, does the practice schedule. She knows what the fields are, she knows what fields we're using, what's open, all that. So she's gonna be your first line of contact for anything fields or practice related. Um, uh, Micros Mini Rec 1, that's everybody who's here right now. If you have a question that's directly related to that, you can go to me, um, whether that's rosters or you have honestly anything else. Um, and then if you need somebody right above, you can contact Darren. Um, he kind of oversees everything. Um, 
And then if for some reason you need to ask somebody about a REC2, which is third and up, um, Karen Corp does that. So if you have another kid in that program or next year, um, you can contact her with those questions. Um, so online coaching support, like I said, I know a lot of you maybe didn't plan on coaching and something we talked about is that you're gonna have help and support in doing that. You don't have to necessarily plan everything from scratch um, if you don't know how to play or how to coach. So some support, some materials and resources we have for you can be found on our website. Um, you can follow this link and also details how exactly to find that. So you're going to go to loungesoccer.com, which you guys have all been to before because you registered to coach. Um, and then you go to the about tab with coaches and then coaches info center. It kind of just directs you right through there. And I'll have so many resources from practice sessions to, you know, what does, you know, coaching look like? Um, honestly, there's just a whole lot there. So um, articles you can read the whole nine yards for you. Um, here are some important dates. If you wanna take a picture or write them down, you're still gonna have access to this after. So there's that too. Um, but just things that you're gonna to want to know. Um, Thursday, the 25th from seven to eight, there's a Zoom that you can join. Saturday is our big equipment and um, session day. So you're gonna come. Nine is the field session, so you can come and you can watch a session, a practice session, so that when you go to do your first practice, it's not the first time you're seeing it, it's not the first time you're doing it. So hopefully that makes you feel a little bit more comfortable when you get to that point, um, but that will be at nine. And then 10, you'll be able to pick up all your equipment. And for you guys, we supply you jerseys, so you're also gonna pick up your team's jerseys. Um, so those are the two things you're really gonna want. If you can't make it to that day, um, you can come Sunday the 28th, from nine to 11 and you can pick it up. And if that doesn't work, then you can email me and we can figure out a time for you to come get that. Um, so lots of options there, but hopefully you can make it to that 27th because I think watching that practice is gonna be really helpful for you guys, especially if you've never coached before. Um, just some general reminders. So team rosters went out on Friday. <laughs> and if you have emailed me since Friday, I promise you, I'm not ignoring you. Um, I am getting to your email. I think I've worked through all of them until two o'clock today. So um, just know that I'm working through them. There's a lot of them though. So just know that I will get to you. Um, but Team Roster went out. So there may be slight changes here and there. Um, there's a lot of coaches in this program. So there are some that may have gotten missed, like this coach requested this player, didn't get put on their team. So. If you see one or two little switches in your roster, don't worry. Um, just go off of what your current roster says. So if you had Luca on your team yesterday and he's not there anymore and Sammy's there now, that's your current roster. So go with that. Um, team officials. So you are the head coach of your team. Um, for micros, don't worry. You don't have to coach anything, but that's what your title is. Um, so you're just going to be that kind of representation for your team. Um, then gear, equipment, uniforms, you kind of went over that. Uh, we're gonna go over that more in a little bit and then player awards we'll go over in a little bit. Um, we kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, don't promise spots to people. Um, this has happened a couple of times already. So I wanna make sure I hit on this. If we can make a change and honor somebody's request and make it work. I'm going to do that. Um, I said this last year and I'll say it again. In my opinion, the biggest part of my job is making your life easy and um, uh, doing what I can to help you. If that's putting somebody on your team and if I can do it, then I'm going to do it. But if there is a situation where I can't then and I don't do it, then just know that I can't. So if you've promised a kid, oh, you're definitely going to get on my roster. I'll, I'll email Mac. I'll make it work. And then I can't that makes a bad situation a little bit worse. So if you have that situation and you want somebody on your roster or they've reached out to you, just email me first, we'll talk, I'll figure it out. And if I can, I will, and then we can go from there. But um, just to save you guys um, an angry parent um, and to make everyone's life just a little bit easier, just go through me first and then we can figure it out. Um, team officials, so referees, no, not referees. <laughs> team officials is you guys. So any 
coach, head coach, assistant coach, anybody who wants to be on the field has to go through um, kind of the registration process that you guys went through. Um, just because we want to make sure that our priority is, you know, the kids and part of that is their safety. And so anybody who's on the field working with them or interacting with them, we want to make sure we know who they are, who is there. Um, and so our way to do that is just to make sure everyone registers. So even if you say can't make it to one game and need somebody to fill in for you, they're going to have to go register as an assistant coach for that game. Um, it shouldn't take super long. And at the end, it'll be worth it just to make sure that everybody is, is clear. But just so we know, there shouldn't be any random people on the field <laughs> that hasn't registered. Let's avoid that at all costs. Um, and yeah, once they, so yeah, once they've registered as an assistant coach, even if it's just for one game, I'll add them to your team. So it'll show up in your team. So then if you need them to fill in again, they're already set um, and they're an easy ask for you. Um, we're going to briefly go over required equipment. Um, you don't have to have cleats. Just want to say that up front. If you, your player wants to wear sneakers, they can. What you want to avoid, though, is not the correct cleats. Um, so we'll go to the slide real quick. Um, there are some that are like football or baseball cleats, and they're either metal or there's a stud in the top, and we don't want that. So if you're, um, if you're going to buy your player cleats, just make sure it's soccer cleats so that nobody's going to break their foot on the soccer field. Um, let's just go back to this one real quick. Um, shin guards, a ball. When you guys pick up your equipment, we'll give you a ball. But for any player who's going to buy their own ball, it's a size three that they should get. Um, and then, you know, plenty of water, hand sanitizer, all that stuff is good. Um, and when you send out your team email, it might be good to send that kind of section in there. Because, you know, parents are going to have questions about that. Um, yeah, so we went over cleats. Jewelry, um, if anybody comes up and asks you, hey, should I get my ears pierced tomorrow? Um, probably I would say no, because then they're not gonna wanna take them out because their ears are gonna close. And then somebody's upset because they can't play. So we just have a no jewelry permitted rule, which includes earrings. So make sure that if you have a player on your team who wears earrings or wears bracelets, make sure to take it off before their game. And then hard cast, we don't want any uh, weapons on the field in a hard cast. <laughs> could be considered up in if used properly. So uh, just make sure it has bubble wrap around it so that it's not um, super hard and that nobody gets hurt on accident. Um, if you or anyone on your team still needs equipment, we're gonna have an equipment day at Dick's, which is August 26th to 29th, and there's gonna be just discounts. So if you still haven't gotten you know, cleats or shin guards, you might wanna wait until August 26th that weekend because you can get them cheaper. So just Maybe something to mention to your team in case they want to get um, a discount. Uniforms. So like I said, you guys will pick up your uniforms and you pick up your equipment. So you don't start having to order your own uniforms until rec one, which is first and second grade. So we will have a bag for you with your name on it, with your team's jerseys in it. So when you pick up your equipment, you'll just grab that and then you can give it to your team at their first practice. So that should be good. And then, Yep, that's all for you guys. Player awards. So we will give out medals at the end of the season. You guys don't have to do anything for that. Um, I got a lot of emails at the end of last season. Like, are we going to get medals? Where do I pick them up? Um, they will already be at your field for you. So your trainers. So you guys will have trainers at your fields and you will have a lead trainer at your field and they will have the medals for you. So when you get to your field on that last day, you're going to pick them up there. So you don't have to come get them. You don't have to do anything you will just get them at your field. So don't worry about that. Um, a little bit about COVID policies. We don't have any of the preemptive things anymore. If you get COVID, the policy is um, that you just let us know. So if you have gotten in contact with anyone with COVID or you are exposed or you're positive, just let us know. And then we have um, a system for you. Um, yeah, and then recognize that policies may change as we go forward. So if things escalate and they get worse again, we may change things, but as for now, this, and then you can access on our website more info if you want more detailed um, explanation. Safe sport, I've got a lot of questions about safe sport. If you haven't done it yet, this is the one training that you will need to do. Um, so just make sure you go onto your account and you do that before your first practice. 
Um, it's just a way for us to, again, ensure that anyone on the field working with kids is um, equipped to be there. Um, and that's gone through trainings and the refresher course. So if you coached last year, you don't have to go through the whole thing again, but there will be a refresher course that you have to do. Um, yeah, and then if you need help doing that, there should have been a previous email sent out with instructions to that. So just go through your info or your inbox um, and try and look for that. Um, a little bit more about safety heading. There's no heading at this age. Um, so just if someone does it, tell them not to do it, kind of avoid any head um, interactions because we want to avoid concussions. Um, this is something that we don't want, um, especially at such a young age because this is just, it just isn't very good for them. So um, if you suspect that anybody has one, so maybe they take a bad fall, land on their head and they're not acting right, um, don't let them play anymore. <laughs> um, we'd rather them miss out on, you know, whatever's left of that practice and be okay, then participate more and then have it get worse. So have them come out and then inform if their family's not around, didn't see it, let them know and then notify me um, that it happened. So, and that's the same for any serious injury. If someone breaks their arm on the soccer field, let their family know and then let me know just so we're all in the loop on anything um, severe that happens. Um, weather and field alerts. So this is, can be from field closures to what if it's raining and thundering during my practice, what do I do? Um, if the fields are closed prior to your practice time, we will send out an email, a text if you're signed up for that, you'll get notified from us. We're not gonna email everybody in the club that the fields are closed. Um, but that's kind of your our bridge between us. So we will let you guys know whether it's a practice, actually, yeah, whether you're in kindergarten and it's practice, or if it's a Saturday session, if your fields are closed, we'll let you know. And then we just ask that you communicate that to your team so that they get that information too. Um, we will play in the rain. So if it's not lightning or thundering during your practice or during your Saturday session, we're still gonna play. The only time we would stop is if there's thunder or lightning and that would be a 30 minute delay. Um, and that will be up to whoever is running your field, whether that's the lead trainer or if you're in kindergarten, um, then you have practice, that would be you. If it lightnings and you see that, just let your team know that it's gonna be a 30 minute delay. Um, and then it's up to you at that point, if you wanna, you know, there's only 10 minutes left, this cancel, you know, we're just gonna end early today. Um, yeah, so we just talked about that. Um, team communication, again, you're kind of our bridge from us to your team. So any information that we need your families to get, we're gonna get to you and that we just ask that you forward it along. Um, so whether that be important dates, what to bring, field closures, um, we just ask that you continue that along so that you're not just informed, but everyone's informed um, and nobody shows up to the field in the rain and have it be closed. <laughs> um, so yeah. Game Changer app, this is um, an app that connects your Sports Connect account with an app. So it's a little bit maybe easier to work. Um, it's similar to TeamSnap if you have somebody who's in travel, maybe a child, um, it works kind of the similarly. So we're not gonna use the health check feature um, this time, but you can do your roster, your schedule, everything in there. I think you can email your families off there. Um, so that's just a good app to have and that you can utilize with your team. Um, just some more important dates. So preschool and pre-K, so micros and pre preschool are Saturday only. And then kindergarten has one weeknight practice a week. So for kindergarten, your practices start September 5th and then all Saturday sessions, the first one, September 10th. Um, so for kindergarten, your practices start just the week leading up to that weekend. Um, and then October 22nd is your last day of the regular season. And the 29th is your makeup date. So if there's any rain cancellations, any Saturday sessions that get missed at the season, the 29th will be that makeup date and we'll make up those sessions on the 29th. Um, so you'll get one additional session if there's anything canceled. Um, and then mid to late November, spring 23 registration opens. So as you guys probably already know, it's good to register early rather than late, especially get a request. So just make sure that around November, you start to kind of be aware of what's happening so that you can register as early as possible. And that's something that, you know, we would ask you guys to communicate to your families too. So that would be like an additional piece of communication 
that if you want your team to stay together, you're like, we want to stay together as a team with these players, communicate with them that, hey, registration opens November. So whatever date it is, let's register on that date so we can, you know, have the best chances of being together in the season. Um, practices so of your coaching and kindergarten team, this is important for you. Um, each kindergarten team is going to have half a field. So that means there's going to be two teams per field and you're going to share that space together. Um, some teams, if you end up with a full field, great, but it's not the norm. Um, so if you show up and someone's on the same field as you, <laughs> don't email me and say, somebody was on my field and stole my goals. They're supposed to be there. It's two teams per field. And that means you each get one of the goals on that field. Um, you guys are leading your practice sessions. Again, I would really utilize those resources that we had at the beginning to help you plan those practice sessions. Um, and if you need help or have any questions, then feel free to ask me. But all of that stuff on that slide that you can access on our website is really, really quality material. So I would go there. Um, and then end about five minutes early to get cleaned up and exit because the next group's gonna go. And with that, if you're the next group, try not to go into the field before that group is finished. So we just wanna work well together. We don't wanna take up someone else's space. We don't wanna go early and be in their way. We don't wanna stay late and then get in the next case way. So just make sure we're aware of what's going on there. Um, Saturday schedules, if you have noticed in your um, team account, the only schedule that's been posted so far is the first week of practice schedules. Um, so the Saturday schedules aren't going to be posted until the 31st. So just be aware that there's kind of a delay there, just so not everything is happening at the same time. Um, but they're going to be published, and then you'll be able to access them in your team page. So if we, you'll be able to go on the 31st, whenever it's posted, and you'll just see it. Um, it'll just be there for you. So um, be aware of that. And then just before each game, so that may be Friday, make sure you check um, your schedule again because there is a chance that something may change late in that week or you know, sometime during that week after you've checked at the very beginning of the season. So don't just check it once at the beginning of the season and then never check your schedule again um, because you know, some cha small changes may happen. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, and then if a change has happened, you should receive an email from me too. So um, it sh you shouldn't have a game change that you aren't aware of, but just make sure you're checking. Um, just so you, that you know everything. Um, and then again, field closure alerts, um, you will be made aware and then please tell your team. Um, yeah, and then on site, if the lead trainer will, if there's lightning, there's thunder, whoever your lead trainer or your site coordinator is for that day, they will let you know what, how to proceed and what to do for them. Um, so this is kind of like, what is Saturday gonna look like? So at the micros level, um, what you want to make sure to have with you is a first aid kit, uh, ice packs, team emergency roster, and your equipment. And then the lead trainers will have everything else for you. Um, the minis is a little more stuff. Make sure you have your game ball, your cones, your jerseys. Um, it might be, you know, smart to have some extra shin guards um, just in case someone forgets any. And then um, your team emergency roster. Um, so this is just pre-session stuff. As the coach, you kind of want to make sure that you're there a little bit before your team, because especially in the first couple of weeks, your team parents might have no idea what's going on and might be really lost. So um, just try and get there about 10 minutes early so that if anybody's wandering around and has no idea where they're going, you can kind of call them over. Um, and it's good for you too, because you need to figure out where the field is. You need to figure out who your trainer is and it'll be a good time for you to introduce yourself to the person who will be with you um, for all or half of your season. Um, and the players, I would just ask them to arrive five minutes early um, just so that when the session starts, you don't have to wait for everyone else to show up. Everyone's just there already. Um, yeah, and then, you know, depart on time uh, so the next team can get there and then say hi to the other coach. Um, Let's all be friends. We're all together. Um, Inclement weather. Again, your lead trainer is going to make the call on pretty much everything. So don't cancel your Saturday session out of nowhere. If you haven't heard from us, then your session's on. And if you're there and your lead trainer hasn't said anything, then you should continue on. Um, and then, yeah, we kind of went over that already. Um, so for micros, the season, 
is seven Saturdays and it's 45 minute sessions. So you're gonna start at whatever time and it's 45 minutes. So last season, I know I got some emails being like, we didn't go the whole hour. That's because it's 45 minutes. So just make sure you're aware of that. It's co-ed, so there's gonna be girls and boys on your team and we're gonna do soccer related activities, right? So again, we're all about fun. We want to bring soccer to life on your soccer field. So um, it's gonna be games that are fun and lively and they're gonna get the kids working and soccer is gonna be incorporated in there as well. And then as trainer led, so you had trainers all seven weeks. So that your job is just to make sure you're there to help them. Um, sometimes managing 13 three-year-olds is really hard. So just make sure that you don't let your trainer drown out there. Um, be, make sure that you're there if they need anything, they need help, they ask for anything. That's kind of what your role is there. Um, Pre-K and kindergarten, you also have seven Saturdays, but it's 50 to 55 minutes. I mean, if they end 50 and they guys do the little cheer at the end, you know, it all evens out. Um, but you're, again, you're not going to go the whole entire hour. So just follow your le leaders, um, your trainers lead on that one. Um, Pre-K is co-ed and then kindergarten is either girls or boys. So just know that you should see it in your roster um, what it is. But and then again, soccer related activities followed by 3v3 games. So how you're going to do it is you're going to be with another team. You're going to divide up your team. 3v3 and you're going to play kind of that way um and then you have a trainer for the first three weeks so you're going to have a chance to see what they do what games they do what works what doesn't work um and then you're going to do the last four so you can do exactly what the trainer did or you can follow our session plans or you can come up with your own it's really up to you but you're going to have the trainer there for the first three weeks and i think that's going to be really beneficial for you guys just to see um kind of how they do it. And so you can kind of mimic that for yourself. Um, coach's role for pre-K and kindergarten, you're gonna manage the 3v3 games. So your trainer leads all the sessions and she's gonna get you know the games going and then that's all you. So you're gonna manage you know what happens during those games, subs, whatever you wanna do um, for that, but that's all you. Um, and then yeah, first three weeks of the trainer, four weeks with yourself, session plans are provided. So again, we're going to give you it, but if you have been doing this for a long time and you want to do your own games that work really well for you, feel free to do that, of course. Um, 3v3 games. Um, so you're going to split into two groups. You're going to have a group of three, a group of three. They're going to play against the other teams, groups of three. Um, you're going to have vests. You're going to have jerseys. Um, so just utilize those so that everyone knows who's on what team. And then you're going to manage one field and assist, um, and your assistant is going to manage the other. So you should have, you know, two people on one person on both fields. And this is kind of what it just looks like. What we talked about: these cones kind of divide up the two fields. So this is one field, this is the other, and the coaches are here. Um, something I would encourage, and I think we talk about this a little bit later too, is that we just want to keep these um, these games going. We want to keep them playing. So. We're not gonna have a lot of stops and starts. Throw in a ball, it goes out, throw in another one. Um, if you have one player who's not really engaged, throw a ball to them, two balls, you know? We just want the players out there having fun, engaging and playing soccer. So even if it doesn't look like a kickoff and, you know, it, that's okay, <laughs> it's, that is fine. Um, which leads me into our primary goal is for them to have fun. It's to be out there, to be engaged, um, not be lectured or screamed at if they're not playing to your expectations um, because that's not fun. Um, so don't stop unless it's absolutely necessary. If someone's injured, stop, right? If there's lightning, stop. But otherwise, just let them play, keep them playing as much as possible. Um, and then give them water breaks too. Um, restarts, again, we kind of just talked about just roll balls back in, keep the game going. Um, we don't need to do a kickoff or kick in, right? Just as much playing as possible. And when we do that too, if we just throw in a ball and keep it going, kids are more likely to be engaged if we're stopping and then starting and then we're stopping again. So we just wanna make sure that kids are having fun and being, you know, they're playing soccer. And um, if they get bored, then chaos ensues. So <laughs> let's just keep them in the game playing as much as possible. Um, safety, we talked about no heading, but also no slide tackling. 
I feel like three-year-olds probably won't be slide tackling that much, but it could look like them just throwing themselves on the ground. Um, and let's try and encourage them not to do that because that's when we get injuries and we want to keep them, you know, safe, of course. Um, so just troubleshooting things, large rosters for each team is 10 or more. So if you're a micros team and you have 12, you can play 4v4. Again, our goal is to get as many people playing at, at a time. So if you have to do 4v4, that's totally fine. Um, if you have to borrow a player from another team, right? This isn't the majors. That's baseball. I'm worth talking about. Um, this isn't, you know, World Cup soccer, right? If you have to borrow a player from another team to keep your team playing, that's okay. Um, again, our end goal is that they're having fun and they're engaged. Um, if one player is dominating, roll the ball to the other players. We want to make sure that not one player is having fun playing the game while everyone else is just watching him score a bunch of goals. Um, so that's kind of your job too in this is just to manage the game. Make sure you're watching what's going on. And if there's an adjustment that needs to be made, make that adjustment. Um, if a child seems disinterested, kind of bring them in, have a conversation with them, be positive, encourage them, hype them up. Um, we want these kids to be enjoying the game. And if they're off on their own and not really be talking to anybody, then they're not going to be having as much fun as we want. So that's kind of your main job is just to make sure everyone's having a good time. Um, yeah, so kind of going off the same kind of concept, fun is our priority, not necessarily professional soccer. So if they're bunched up or they're dribbling, they're not making overlapping runs, that's okay. They're three, four, five, six years old, right? They're dribbling or kicking the ball wrong. They're not locking their ankle, using their laces. That's okay. They're three, four, five, six years old. So um, let's just keep in mind, you know, what our expectation is for them so that we don't put unrealistic expectations on them. Um, and then again, kind of my, managing our expectations equals modeling the proper behavior. So if our expectations are correct, then we're probably going to model, you know, correctly. So we want to be positive. We want to be, you know, respectful of other people. Uh, we're responsible for how our team acts. So if we're being aggressive or unsportsmanlike, then likely, especially in our kindergarten, older ages, our players are going to follow suit. So let's just make sure our, our um, expectations for how they act starts with how we act too. Um, yeah. Yeah. So sportsmanship after a game, say good game to the other team, say thank you to the refs, say thank you to the parents. Let's just make sure that we're modeling, right, the kind of what we want to see. And then clean your area. This is a good way to kind of encourage players to be good people, right? We don't want to leave an area that was clean before a mess after. So um, that's just something we want to make sure that we're being kind to the people that follow us. And then snacks. Um, if you received a bunch of my emails about what their expectations are for the coach, the most important one is um, who is bringing a snack after the game? Because the kids are going to want their snack after the game. Like, that's what you wait for. And for some of them, maybe they play the game just for the snack. So, um, and that could be as easy as just setting up like, hey, who wants to do it this week? Or who wants to do it next week? Or you can be really organized and send out a sign of genius at the beginning of the season. Um, however works for you, works for you. Um, but just make sure someone's bringing the oranges, okay? Um, and then report any serious injuries to... First, your lead trainer. So every site has a lead trainer for a reason. They're going to be your first line of contact during Saturday sessions. And then they can either come to me or they can tell you to come to me um, if it needs to go that far. But they can probably solve or answer 90% of the things that you're going to have questions or problems with. Um, and then just finding some resources for you. Um, on our website, we kind of showed you before, there's materials resources there. Um, that so we found under the Coaches Info Center. And then um, admin support, you can go to me. I can answer probably any question you have. And if I can't, I'll send you to Darren above me and he can answer um, going from there. And then finally, good luck. Um, again, some of you came in eager and wanting to coach. You're really excited. Some of you took some convincing. Maybe you got one of my emails saying we didn't have enough coaches or maybe you got eight of them, <laughs> depending on what division you're in. Um, but the point is you're here, you've said yes. Um, and I just hope that this is a really great experience for you, for your players. And if there's anything I can do to make it a better experience, let me know, just shoot me an email. 
Um, and I, I will do that for you if I can. So yeah, I think that's the end. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Um, and now if you still have any questions, um, go ahead and ask. I see some people have been in the chat. So um, let me see if there's any, Darren's been managing that. Um, but does anyone have any? Uh, Jason, you have your hand raised. Hello. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thanks, Mac. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the mm -hmm. session. It was great information that you provided. Um, I am curious, you know, I'm, I'm coaching the micros uh, with this, you know, and we're not meeting until September 10th, which is the first day. Should we meet with our team before that so they know, so the parents know even who to, who we are, uh, see our face or anything like that uh, beforehand? Or should we just leave it on September 10th, but then how are they going to know who we are? <laughs> right, right. If you Thank want you. to, honestly, um, do as much as you want. If you want to have maybe like an ice cream social and meet at Brewster so you can meet your team, that's perfectly fine. Um, your team's going to know where to go on that Saturday. So they're going to know they're on field three. Um, so if you don't want to do that beforehand, you can just make yourself known on field three on Saturday. Um, but you should send out, you know, that welcome email that we talked about and just introduce yourself and kind of do that. So if you want, you can, if you want to just send the email, you can do that too. Um, it's really up to you and if you have time or if you, you know, want to. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Lindsay. Um, I Hi, do Lindsay. have a question. Um, do we get to pick our own team name and be referred by that name as a team or are we just going and not having a team name, I guess? Yeah, so um, if you want, um, you can meet at your first session to come with the team name and you can refer to yourselves as that all season long. Um, I'm not really going to email your team much going forward. So there's not going to really be a time for me to refer to the club to refer to you guys, but by all means, I know kids love it. I know it's really great for them. Uh, and then I get emails at the end of the season. I would love team dragons to stay together. And I have no idea who's on team dragons. Um, but yeah, so I know a lot of people do it um, and I know that kids love it. So by all means, go ahead. Anyone else? Let me just jump in there just quickly. My name, my name's Darren. I'm Darren Patricio. Uh, we don't, we don't take your team name because we have six and a half thousand kids mm -hmm. and over 590 teams, uh, and there will always be two dragons. So we, our, our staff doesn't know who to, who we're referring to. So internally, the answer is yes, but for us, you will remain as K boys, Leesburg, a <laughs> Brody. That's a good question though. Anyone else? Tracy? Hey, yes. So for the pre-Ks, are they required to wear certain colors, shorts and socks, or can they just wear any color? Short, shorts and socks don't matter. We're gonna give them, you know, their shirt to wear, but other than that, rainbow, black, white, doesn't matter. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Jarrett. Are you going to be e emailing out the, the slide deck that you just covered? Um, the slide will be shared. Yes. Um, it's going to be on the website. Um, so if you look at the email that I sent out a little bit earlier, you should be able to locate that. Um, but you, yeah, everyone will have access to the slideshow. Uh, David. I saw something in the presentation that talked about pennies in addition to jerseys. Are they going to have both or is it one or the other? Um, so when we give out the coaches equipment, you'll have jerseys in there. So um, you can use those. Great. You all, yeah. So in the, in the equipment you're picking up, you're going to get jerseys, you're going to get cones, you're going to get a ball, and then you're going to get an ice pack. So you should have everything that you need. Uh, Jamie. Hi, sorry. You might have covered this. Um, are the kids allowed to, at the end of the game or – so I'm, I'm helping with the kindergartners. I'm an assistant coach. Are they actually allowed to like high five, shake hands, fist bump, or no, nothing, just good game from the other side of the field type of a distance because of COVID? Or are they allowed to actually interact? Or is that something that 
the parents might weigh in on or do we just stay away from it altogether to stay safe? What are your thoughts? Um, I think now it should be fine. I mean, okay. Gary might have to step in if I'm wrong, but um, it should be fine if you want to do it and then the coach wants to do it, uh, then I think you're all good. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we currently have no COVID restrictions on the field. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Carrie. Hi, I just, I think I got a little confused as far as uh, the terminology. So is there a difference between micro preschool and mini pre-K? <laughs> Yeah, that confused me for a long time too. Uh -huh. um, yeah, there's micros three, there's micros four, and then there's preschool or pre-K, sorry, which is co-ed and then there's kindergarten. Um, so there's four different buckets that you guys will find yourselves in. Um, okay. Yeah. And the, for the micro, um, micro preschool four, they have trainers the entire time? Yeah, micros three and micros four has trainers all seven sessions pre-k and kindergarten have them just the first three perfect thank you mm -hmm. um vanessa hi thank you for the presentation i just had a quick question regarding safety mm -hmm. um it said uh first aid kits are you guys supplying first aid kits should we bring our own and do you have i'm guessing band-aids and you know, <laughs> normal stuff but you know god forbid something more serious is there CPR, I mean, are you having kind of that sort of thing available um, or somebody in the field to contact in case that were to happen, just, just to know? Yeah, yeah. so and like that, your lead trainer is gonna be the one you wanna contact and then contact me, contact Darren. Anything of that severity, you know, follow the chain of command up. Um, but as far as first aid kids go, I think we just give the, um, ice pack and then a little first aid kit um so it should have band-aids in there and stuff but if you need a splint or anything it might not happen I hope not. <laughs> and then there's no lead trainer for the first graders right that's correct yeah okay cool um katie yeah. i think you've had your emoji up for a while hey thanks yeah I, for the kindergartners where we have the trainers for the first three sessions is that the weeknight end the Saturday session or just the Saturday sessions? Just the Saturday session. So practices will be just you guys from the start. And then for Saturdays, you'll have a trainer for the first three. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim? Hey, Mac, thanks for the presentation. Um, if uh, I'm, I'm a kindergarten coach, if I don't have an assistant coach, what does my, what does my Saturday session look like? Yeah, so the process that you should go through is first email your team as soon as you know that there's going to be a session that you're not going to be at and let them know, hey, September, whatever, I'm not going to be there. I have a conflict. Can anybody cover? And then most of the time somebody says, yeah, I can cover that one session. And if not, if everyone's like, no, no, thanks, then um, contact me and we can see about rescheduling. Um, actually, with minis we probably won't do that but um yeah after that if no one steps up just contact me and we can go from there thank you mm -hmm. yeah hey hey jim uh, there's there's a couple of people that have asked that question in, in the chat here so first e like max said email the group say hey i'm by myself we're gonna have to split up we're gonna have to play a 3v3 game i need someone's help uh people are reluctant for whatever reason once you get on the field you'll see how simple it is my advice on your first day of, of training, and we will see this on Saturday, and I will pick some of you out on the field on Saturday. Mm -hmm. There is always one person that is running around, fetching balls, standing by the goal, waiting for the ball to go out so that they can get the, the game back on, but they don't want to help. Get that person onto the field and then sign them up on the field right there. <laughs> they want to do it, but they just maybe don't know where to find the, the info or they don't realize how, how easy it is and how simple it is. So there will always be one eager parent out of the 20 that you have out there. Hopefully that, that one to, uh, that want to help. They don't know it yet. They just need a, a little nudge from you. Makes sense. Thank you. Um, Jamie. Sorry. That was my only question. I'm, I didn't take my hand down. I apologize. <laughs> That's, a fact. That's all right. I will hold it against you. 
Um, okay, I don't see anyone else's hands up. So if we're good, then I won't hold you any longer, but speak now if you have any questions. You can also email me later. I won't shun you. Yeah, I still don't have a practice time. This is for kindergarten. When will that be posted? Yeah, Joe, have you sent in a practice request yet? No, I don't think so. Yeah, so once you send Jamie your practice request, she'll get that on the roster or on your schedule for you. Right. Um, How do yeah. I do that? Um, so if you, jamie.rossin, you can also find her email in the slideshow and yeah. on our website. Um, if you just email her, it could be Monday through Thursday, 5 or 6 p.m. And you just let her know when you want to practice and then she'll get you. And then you should be able to see it on your team. Got it. Thank you. And her email is now in the chat. So easy access there. You. Yep. Anything else? Yeah, Mac, can you hear me? This is Gabe. Yes. Yes. Hi, Gabe. Hey, um, uh, first of all, thanks for all that you do and all the emails you respond to from me. So I can't imagine you doing that <laughs> times. Um, so on Saturdays, um, I have a I have a mini K. I get confused again, just like you did uh, pre K. <laughs> anyway, I have a team. I have, I have three teams, but I think I'm um, the Saturday uh, training uh, led sessions. If you know, if I'm pretty experienced with what they do, do I actually need and I don't need the trainer? Do I still have to use the trainer? Um, that's a good question. They're paid to be there. And I think that they love what they're doing. So they probably want to be engaged, but I think you will probably have the same trainer a lot. So I would just befriend them and then you can co do it with them. So it could be like a team, like, Hey, do you want to do this? If you have games you want to do, I would just work with them individually. I'm sure that they wouldn't mind you taking the lead. Um, so I think that might be a a case by case basis, but but yes, I mean there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. But okay, I hope that made sense. <laughs> I'll work it out with the trainer. Yeah, perfect. Anything else? Awesome. Well, thank you guys all. Um, I think at one point there was like eighty something of you guys. So thank you guys for jumping on on this this Monday night at six fifteen p.m. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful season. And again, if there's anything that I can do for you, um, please let me know. Um, if I can do it, I will do it for you. So, um, Hey, Mac, I'm yeah. sorry. I do have a quick question on yeah, the uh, portal for our teams. Will it show our assistant coach? Cause, um, I haven't seen one on mine and my husband's more than happy to sign up. Yeah. So if you have an assistant coach allocated to your team, it'll show up on your team page. So if you don't have one uh, okay. on your team page and you probably don't, and if he wants to be assistant coach, just have him go on and register and then shoot me an email because I won't get notified that there's been a registration. Just let me know and then I can go in and do that for you. Okay, you can ignore my email about it and then um, about the request and then I'll just have him jump on and get started and then I'll let you know when it's done. Perfect. That sounds good. Thank you. All right. Well, if there are any other questions or you think of any later, just shoot me an email. Um, I'm planning to answer all my already existing emails um, by tonight. So it shouldn't get buried in anything going forward. But, but yeah, any, any, anyway, <laughs> have a good night. Um, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.